Council was uh, initiated by the Selangor State Government uh, under Invest Selangor War Berhad is on June 2015 and this place is SDCC, Selangor Digital Creative Center was launched in October 2015 Okay, uh, straightforward which is uh, CTEC have four main, four main trusts which we have EC e-commerce education, we have online 100, apps 100 and SDCC we go one by one, okay, what is e-commerce and then what is CTEC uh, doing is on e-commerce and startup which is for e-commerce, we have e-commerce class, we have uh, academy and then we have the initiative which is the online 100 and apps 100 we have award, we have the events like that and then for the startup, uh, we are focused for main point which is uh, IR 4.0 and then another one we add on for this year is eSport and then uh, we have another initiative like for startup is like uh, SAP Slang Accelerator Program we have the Startup Connect before the SAP uh, last two years and then we have awards like this place SDCC was awarded by MDEC as a Malaysia Digital Hub and inside the SDCC we have the Maker Room Studio behind this hall uh, also was awarded by uh, MDEC for the Digital Maker Hub so the event is not really different for e-commerce and startup for some time the event is we combine the events okay these are some of our achievement during two, since 2015 until last year uh, we have already doing like 73 class and include this year I think more than 80 class until uh, today and then we have around 200,000 individual who already reached in CTEC from the class event, uh, from the conference exhibition and then we have organized 8 major e-commerce conference and a 3 smart city event this is some of uh, summary achievement for online 100 and apps 100 initiative since 2015, we already recruit around 425 merchants and until today, we already have around 470 merchants include, uh, which is we already create the mobile apps and already onboard them to the web store which is from the brick and mortar to online we change uh, their business model from the brick and mortar to online so from the all 425, with the all marketplace from Ubeli, Shopee, Lazada, and Eleven Street, the total GMV for them is around two, uh, sorry, 10.3 million. And from the 10 million is around 80,000 uh, order. Okay, this is some achievement for like. I have mentioned before, so you just can read here. And then another one we have like um, overseas mission, we have the e-commerce and smart city mission. Like last year we have bring some merchant from our from the four hundred merchant uh, to China to visit Alibaba and uh, some few places in the Hangzhou which is to give some overview to them how they can like, say they want to expand their market to China they learn from them so this is some like uh, okay for e-commerce class <coughs> like today what you attend is uh, we manage to have class in three different languages which is Bahasa, English and Mandarin so like today in English we have class that like I think uh, Facebook marketing right okay Facebook marketing so like uh, last year we have like CTEC e-commerce masterclass but this year we change because we want to focus to e-sport we have like e-sport class for this year maybe we don't have the e-commerce master class lah, but we planning to have like uh, advanced class which is not like today today you just attend for right two hours and maybe future we will do like whole one day or two or three days class 
this is the schedule. So we only have around until June for e-commerce class. This one is the free class. Mostly we, we, we say it's a basic class. Lah. So the next is uh, next week pemasaran digital, and I think this one also on puasa. Okay, and then after raya we, we we will have the Alibaba Global Cost Training, another one, but this one is on Mandarin. So later uh, maybe uh, we will post the detail everything on the our Facebook. This is what uh, happened before. My starter is a CTEC uh, council member was awarded as a official training partner by Alibaba. This is our uh, sorry virtual class uh, CTEC Academy, and then online hundred. Okay, online hundred and F hundred is a bundle initiative, which is you join the online hundred, you will get the F hundred. What the purpose for online hundred and apps hundred is we want to uh, change uh, brick and mortar seller, brick and mortar merchant from the traditional way to the online way. Okay. What we do is uh, we partner with a few marketplace as uh, Lazada, Shopee, Ubeli, and Eleven Seed, which is uh, any merchant who join this program, we will bring you to the marketplace lah. And then the rest, we will partner with others uh, e-commerce uh, service provider. Like you want to website, we have like partner with the uh, Easy Store, and then we have partner with like cross border also like eBay and eRoman, who want to start selling their product to overseas. This is some uh, snapshot lah. Mostly the product from last year and until this year also they focus more to on uh, what we have actually. Merchant is come from the home and living category. There's some overview. Also, apps hundred is same like online hundred, but we give you a free mobile apps, which is the mobile apps is belong to your brand. Maybe your name is let's say the store name is Alzuan.com. So I, uh, the apps is uh, the apps it will be named Alzuan, so you can download Alzuan from the iOS or Android. It's free. We develop for free. Everything is subsidized by Islamic State government. And then the last one for CTEC is uh, SDCC, which is this place around eleven thousand square feet, uh, already awarded as a digital hub by MDEC. So future we have we will have another SDCC more bigger than this is in Kota Damansara. Uh, we will update on that. Okay. Okay. One more thing is. Inside the CTEC SDCC, we have a free photo studio for use uh, to any seller who want to take their photo for their product. The one is you only go to our website, uh, booking your slot, and then our click will call you to confirm. So you can use for free. We also provide a camera and photographer that can train you how to take the good photo. Lah. So this is an another event like we have top e-commerce merchant award. We have like since 2000, uh, 2016 until this year. Also we will have. So I think this will be launched after after a year. When? Yes, after a year. So any e-commerce seller who want to participate, who want to uh, fight with the bigger e-commerce player in Malaysia. We allow you to come and join this uh, top e-commerce merchant award. So I think until this, I hope you say, if you got anything you want to know more about CTEC, you can find me, Salman, and others CTEC staff here after this class. All right, thanks. Okay, thank you as well. I think today we have quite a um, full house. Uh, we, okay. Okay, next, uh, I think let's invite uh, David Ho without further ado. David Ho?
please uh, come forward and we can start. Just one, two. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is David Ho here, and uh, you'll be spending the next 60 minutes with me. So I'd like to thank you for giving your precious time, and I uh, hope to, uh, to share as much as I can. Uh, it's a 60-minute session, and uh, social media in e-commerce is a very big topic, right? So. I will try my best and I hope that uh, you will be able to pick up some of the trends and some of the best practices that will help you to do social media to promote your e-commerce portal, right? In, in, in key, some of the key platforms in social media, right? So I will introduce you a strategy that's been, that is a best practice uh, that has been implemented by big brands like Coca-Cola, and uh, even like Unilever and things like that. But one of the things that for social media is that everyone today can do social media marketing because you can spend a minimum of five US dollars and you can reach your target consumers. So, so everyone is good on that? All right. So um, yeah, this is my slide apparently. Okay, so that's me. Um, so. I just want to see, uh, ask the uh, audience from the floor, how many of you have been advertising in social media? Can I see a show of hands? Right, a lot from back there, right, and, 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 and front here. So majority of you have, you have not advertised in social media before, whether it's uh, Instagram, whether it's uh, Facebook, whether it's LinkedIn, or even Twitter. So majority of us, right? Yeah. So um, just to share with you, uh, today companies like Facebook, Google, right, Twitter, Instagram, WhatsApp, they are all making marketing, right, easy for any businesses, whether big or small. Okay. And the thing is that for Facebook companies, they are firstly they are designed to help small shops, right? Because you can actually target very accurately your target market. Say for example, in CTEC, if you have a shop today here, I can target people who is coming to this area within one kilometers. That kind of position, right? So marketing essentially is basically about promoting your business. Because today, when you are doing a business, you have a business, what you need is customer, right? Business with no customers is not a business. And today, if you walk around and ask people who are business owners, how is sales? What, what do you think the answer will be? Bad, right? Because today, we live in a world where there's competition, right? And the hardest question we ask ourselves as a business owner is, what's so special about your product? Is your product meeting the needs of the people? So these are some very fundamentals that I need to share with you as we dive into this topic of social media and this dive into this topic of marketing. Because marketing that is done wrongly will cost you a lot of wasted money. Yeah, a lot of wasted money. And I'm sure those people on the back and also the front who's been doing Facebook advertising, right? Uh, you all do Facebook advertising, people from the back? Yes. All right. Do you find that your, 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 your cost per click is getting more and more expensive? Yes. Yeah, that's why um, Mark Zuckerberg, which is the founder of Facebook, is getting richer and richer every day. Right, so let's dive in today on social media marketing for e-commerce. So when you do e-commerce, I know most of you um, may not even have a website, right? So if today you don't have a website, I will encourage you to start having a website first because a website needs to work hand in hand with your 
social media page. Whether it's a Facebook page, whether it's your Instagram account, or a Twitter, or your LinkedIn page. You need to have a website. You need to drive traffic to your website. Because your website is a representative of your e-shop. It's your e-shop, right? So you don't want to spend a lot of your money in terms of doing just social media marketing, right? So you want to drive traffic to your website. Okay, let's look at marketing. So marketing today is in the journey of what I call amazing transformation. So I'm sure you heard of this term, this big word called digital transformation. It's really a big word. And today, actually, to be, to be honest, because I've been you know, doing this digital marketing thing for the last uh, decade, about 10 years, since the, the, the emergence of Google, right? Um, actually, there's no such thing as called digital marketing. Marketing is marketing, right? Fundamentally, it's marketing. And I had the privilege to speak to one of the audience here, one of the participants here today. Um, and he said, do you know this term called ROPO? R-O-P-O. R-O-P-O. Sorry, man. <laughs> it stands for, anybody want to make a guess? Chu, you can answer this, huh, Chu? What is this abbreviation? R-O-P-O. Make a guess. You do it all the time. In fact, all of you do it all the time. It's called, want me to give you an answer? Research online, purchase online. Simple, isn't it? We do a lot of research, right? In our mobile phone. And sometimes we purchase online too. Yeah? Okay, so today, Consumers like yourself is being empowered by the smartphone. Yeah? So everyone has a smartphone and we can do a lot of tons of stuff in on our smartphone. So marketing is being empowered today by mobile. Yeah? And the smartphone basically has a lot of data that tracks you. Like today, Facebook knows. Google knows, Instagram knows, WhatsApp knows, right? And all the advertisers, if they want to know, that all of you here, 200 odd people here, are in CTAC right now, real time. We got real time data on, on, on you right now. So where's your privacy? Yeah? No privacy. Big Brother is watching. So, and this has empowered what I call marketing. So marketing, remember, is the way, marketing by definition, a layman definition means promote your business so that you can get customers. And not only that, when you get customers, you want them to continue to buy from you, right? Because repeat customer is so important, right? And you want your customers to stay loyal to you. And at the end of the day, you want a customer to rave about you, to speak good about you. And then when you reach that stage, your customers are selling for you. Isn't that a good thing? You want your customers to sell, sell, sell for you, right? And, and all you need to do is pay zero cost. But you got to cultivate, this is what I call this marketing funnel. This marketing funnel, which I will share with you in a short while, okay? So it's algorithm. It's machine learning and artificial intelligence. All these are big words. Basically, what we have today is a super smart computer. Quote unquote, Jack Ma says, today, please don't compete with the supercomputers because you cannot calculate as fast as them, right? So you need to what? To have what? Creativity and empathy. Two words I want to share with you. Creativity and empathy. Let's talk about empathy. Sorry, let's talk about creativity. Today, we've got to be creative. If you want to capture the attention of our audience, we've got to be creative. So that post that you 
you you actually put on your Facebook news feed, right? When you create a post, whether it's a video, an article, right? Has to be creative. Has to be eye-catching, right? Because people only first look at the first three seconds, right, of the video, right? So if they're not interested, they will just thumb away. So in today's world, in today's human being species, one of the enlarged organ or parts of our body is going to happen, right, in the next 10 years, is our thumb. Our thumb is going to get bigger and bigger. And we, we are going to be like monkeys really, right? Yeah, because we walk like this all the time, right? Right? Yeah? And we always look at our, our, our smartphone and keep on scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. We always do our ropo, right? Yeah? So the thing is that we've got to be creative, right? As we do marketing, as we promote our, our business, we need to be creative. And social media is free to access, right? It's like free TV station. Remember those days where we had TV 1, 2, and 3? You all still watch it? Probably not, right? But you have heard of free terrestrial TV, right? Right? So the thing is that you watch it because you wanted to watch it. They got good stuff in there. So same thing like social media. You go and look at the news feed and stop. Thumb stop at those news feed because you are interested in that content. Right? Yeah? So let's use the term advertising here. So, many times when we talk about mar marketing, people always think about advertising. So advertising, in fact, used to be very effective, but today, very ineffective. And if you do marketing as your first step in social media, advertising, that means do your Facebook ads, your Instagram ads, and all those things, Without doing your branding first at the top, you will, number one, waste a lot of money. Because there is, number one, no brand trust. The word trust. Right? So you can shout out your name as many times, your company name as many, or your brand name as many times as possible, but people don't care. Why should they care? So you need to articulate the reason why they should care. Right? So you need to look at your business. So the thing is that never, never start off with advertising. Start off with what I call branding first. Right? Make sure your brand creates value to the end user. What is the problem that you're solving today? So brands like Grab, what is the problem that are they solving? I'm sure majority of this room here, 90% of you got a Grab app, right? And you don't need Grab for car, you also Grab for food. True? Yeah? So why? Why Grab? What is Grab trying to solve here, people? Come on. Transportation, public transportation. We don't like to take taxis. Sorry, no offense to any taxi drivers here. We don't like to take taxis. So Grab and Uber then was there to solve that I don't like to take taxi. For women, it's that I don't feel safe taking taxi. For general everyone, I don't like to haggle for price. For parents, I'm, I, I am worried if my kids right, will take taxi and don't know where they are. So you're seeing that Grab and Uber actually fulfills that need. So we need to ask that in our business before even we start to do advertising. What need do we need to fulfill? Right? And why us? Right? Why us? Because there are compet competitions who are, may have fulfilled those needs. All right. So these are very, very fundamental of marketing. So don't jump straight into do to do Facebook advertising, Instagram posts, and all these things. Right. Start to ask yourself a question: What is your mission today? What is the mission to solve the society problem? Because one of the things that while today we have a lot of marketplace, a lot of marketplace uh, in 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 in, uh, in 
in Asia, like you have Shopee, Spotify, Lazada, and all those things, right? They do marketing for you, right? They look at marketing for you, but the thing is that what they don't do is that they don't actually convert those shoppers. I call them window shoppers, huh? window shoppers into your customers. They will bring window shoppers to you in their platform, but they are not responsible to convert them to a customer. That is your responsibility. So today, if you're working with marketplace players like Lazada, Shopify and all this, you need to have a website. You need to start doing branding on top of just social media, right? So this is where, again, sorry, social media helps to promote your brand, establish who you really are and what is the problem that you're trying to solve, okay? So these are top five companies that is good for promoting your business. I think last week we had a session on Google marketing, all right? So Google is the number one company because they do what I call intent marketing. By the way, don't worry, don't have to stick step short because I saved all my presentation deck into Slack share. So if you don't know what is Slack share after the sessions, come and look for me and I will show you how to download it for free. Okay, and talking about free, I think it's very appropriate for us right now to give a big hand to CTAC. Right, let's give them a big hand to CTAC and the state government of Selangor. Huh? You know, the best, the most powerful word in marketing is the word free. <laughs> it's the word free. And they give us free knowledge, right? And free food afterwards, right? Free aircon, wonderful, nice place. So let's give them another big round of applause. It's not louder. Okay? All right. So search is one of the very key that in, 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 in the marketing world, what we call them is that we call this marketing strategy as intent marketing. Intent. I-N-T-E-N-T. -E intent. Intention. So when you have any intention, just say for example, a very... Um, not very important intentions like uh, where is the best um, you know place to go uh, for chakwitya. Oh, sorry, sorry. I don't mean to show disrespect during the Ramadan period. <laughs> sorry. Um, so let me give me another example, right? Say, for example, you, if you want to look for something, right? What do you do? The first thing you do in Malaysia slang, we call it Google, lah, right? So Google is the number one website that Malaysia or even the whole wide world goes to, except China, except Taiwan. So China, the equivalent of a search engine is called Baidu, right? Baidu, and in Taiwan is Yahoo, yeah? So, but majority in Malaysia, we use Google, right? So Google is a very, very important, uh, what you call marketing tool to promote your business. Because when people key in a keyword, what it shows what their intention. Google does is that they display what I call a classified ad. Many many moons ago, there's this, this newspaper called Malay Mail. Okay, I, I know all blank faces here. All right, yeah, with the exception of few. It's a it's a it's a, it's a hundred and twenty year old newspaper, but since last year they have gone completely online, under the Malay Mail online, right? So those days when I was uh, young working, um, uh, they had what you call a classified section, right? Whereby people from Kuantan, when they come here to work, they will look for room to let. So these are all classified ads. And today, Google is doing all the classified ads. <laughs> okay, why? It's super useful. You need to look for rooms, you need to look at uh, selling your cars, right? Uh, so. Google is all about classified ads. If you were to think about that, right? You have an intention and you are serving an ad, right? So that is super, super relevant in your business. Second one, of course, is uh, Facebook. Everybody is very familiar with. The third one is uh, uh, YouTube. So um, I, have, uh, I have three boys. Uh, they're 16, 14, and uh, 11. So my 11 boy and my 14-year-old my, my boy uh, one day I asked them, so son, 
You know, your papa works very hard uh, to provide you good education, uh, right? So I'm expecting a little bit of a ROI here, return of investment, right? Okay, so when you grow up, um, you know, what do you want to be? Instantaneously, both of them say, I want to be a YouTuber. <laughs> My heart sank, okay? My heart sank. I mean, nothing wrong to be a YouTuber, right? Uh, but you'll be competing with millions and millions of YouTubers. Alright? Yeah? And they told me, it says, Pa, 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 even this eight-year-old boy in Philippines by the name of Ryan, right? Eight-year-old boy is making about US 12 million a year. Just reviewing toys. So check them out. Check Ryan out in Ryan's Toy Review in YouTube and you'll see, you know, the, both the parents are like chasing after him, you know, with the camera and, and, and doing, you know, the YouTubing, right? Yeah? So, YouTube today, it's, it's our social TV. Think about it. You know, for many, many marketeers or many businesses, it's always very expensive to be on TV, right? Yeah, it's expensive to advertise on prime time. But now, today, you can. You can have a YouTube channel, you can have a social TV, right? And you can start your TV station. Same thing, you can do your podcast and so forth, right? And, and then emails. Emails is one of the applications that is most popular amongst everyone, right? So emails are very personal, some they use for work, but we use our emails for what? Right nowadays, we use our emails to log in to many, many applications, right? To register in any website. So today, I suggest that you create many, 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 many emails. Okay? Ah, so don't give away your work email and your very personal email, especially those people got Hotmail. And who has Hotmail? Okay, okay, if you don't want to raise your hand, it's fine. Okay? All right? Yeah? So don't give away your email away. Create many, many other emails because Facebook can track you, right? They can use your information and they can actually track you down and serve you an ad that you may not want to see, okay? So emails are very powerful today. And the last one is basically display. This is basically Google AdWords. Okay, so I just want to give you an overview that today to promote your e-commerce business is not just social media. That's the point I want to say. Okay, so now since this is a class on social media, let's dive into social media. Is everybody okay so far? Okay, yeah. So don't worry, I can see you when you're dozing off. All right, yeah, but don't worry. I, then I will, I will change the pace a little bit. Okay, so we know that social media is one of the key generator for footfall. So if you have business, you have a brick and mortar business, one of the, one of the key things is what? Footfall, right? Customers walk into your shop, right? That's the most important thing. So for your online store, which is your e-commerce, social media is one of the key driver, right? That drives. So the first thing we want to do is to drive people to our e-store e-store. That's the first thing that you need to do in marketing. So then pose a big question. Why should people come to your store? Right? Why should people come to your store? That is the question that you need to ask before you start doing advertising. Yeah? So, one of the key things that we do in terms of dry footfall is this term that we use in marketing called lead generation, lead. So lead is basically your prospective customer, your prospective customer, not your customer yet, but your potential customer, all right? And, and, and many of you have done your business for a while already and you roughly know the profile of your customer, all right? So the thing is that we, what we want to do is to create leads and leads can be cold leads. And what are those cold leads? One day, uh, you receive a call from your mobile phone. Number unknown. So, how do you feel? Should you take the call? 
Most times you don't, right? Some more you block, block some more and report. Uh, you should do that. So a lot of telemarketers who does what I call cold leads, they randomly call. So even if you have a conversation with them, they will tell you, oh, you have been referred to by your friend. Then you ask them, which friend? Oh, no, 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 you don't know. My, 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 my manager passed to me one, uh, your, your, your number. So I call you, law. <laughs> right? Yeah? So those are cold leads. And we know cold leads are not a good lead. In fact, you annoy them. So when we want to talk about lead generation, we're talking about getting warm lead. So later on, I'll share with you what defines a warm lead. Yeah? yeah? What defines a hot lead? What defines a sizzling lead? Wow, I've got a kind of level, you know? A few levels of kind of leads, you know? Right? So I'll share that with you. So social media today has this platform uh, or this feature in social media advertising. Uh, they have a feature where they can do, like for example, in Facebook, it's called Facebook Business Page. All right. So, and, and when you do, when you have a Facebook business page for your business, uh, you can also do Instagram also. It's together. So, you all know, right? Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp, they are all belong to one company, right? Yes. Uh, that's scary. <laughs> that's scary. Because they, they have about close for individual, they have close to about 400,000 data points about you. 400,000 data points about you. What you eat, what you, what you, what you, where you are, when your, when your anniversary is going to be, right? They also know whether you have a newborn baby or they also know. They also know your friends and friends. They also know whether you are renting a room or you are staying in a family house. They know a lot about you, okay? Yeah, just by these three apps all together. So social media ad audience creation that is aligned to your unique uh, customer segmentation, right? It's very key. So basically the things that you know the profile of your customers, you need to segmentize them. So use that knowledge of who your customers are, right? And especially some of you have what I call a CRM database. How many of you got CRM database? Big word, huh? It's actually customer relationship. Uh, management, right? So when somebody comes to your shop, buy something, right? Uh, the cashier will punch something, right? And then will put in your, your credit card if you pay with your credit card, right? So all this information should be saved in what I call a CRM database. And then you can use this database, right? And actually put it into the Facebook business manager page, right? the tools, the features that they have, and ask Facebook to look for those audiences, those who have been your customers before, and ask them and give them a good offer so that they will buy again from you. Okay? So that's, that's customer audience. That's what I call unique customer segmentation. Okay? Big word. All right. Don't worry. So for the next uh, 40 minutes, I will share with you uh, more in simple terms. All right? So, so social media today provides you quality leads, right? Quality leads. This is what we want. We want quality customers, right? We don't want any Tom Day Harry to walk into our store, right? Right? So we want quality leads. Okay. So let's just give you a, a, a visual in terms of what I mean by, uh, for example, Facebook. Facebook has this feature that can bring you quality leads. Okay. So you must have a website. So when you have a website, somebody comes and visit your website. And in your website, normally you have three sections in your website. So website is like a book. In a book has many, many chapters. So chapter one is homepage. It's the door of your page, of your, of your website. Second one is category pages. So if you're doing like, for example, furnitures, if you're selling furnitures, by the way, yeah, if you are thinking of setting up an e-commerce business, right? One of the business you go in uh, is called furniture. And I'll tell you why afterwards. It's a multi-billion business in Malaysia. People buy actually furniture from e-commerce, you know? Right? So, 
If you're buying, for example, this is a furniture website. So you have your home page, which basically tells you what is your mission. What problems are you trying to solve for furniture buyers? So that should be in your home page. Then secondly, you have the category pages. So furniture's got many types, right? Got dining tables, got cabinets, and so forth, so forth. Those are categories. Then your product pages are, say for example, within the category page, uh, bed, oh sorry, mattresses, okay, bed, 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 bed and mattresses, right? Then you got different types, right? You got the double deck, you got the, 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 the king size bed, you got the triple king size, nowadays, uh, that three or four people will sleep in the same bed. All right, so you, you get a picture, right? So that's why you need to have a website. So when you promote, when you do your Facebook advertising or Instagram, when they click, what happened? Where do they go to? They go to a website. Exactly, You're right? You don't want them to linger in Facebook because your products and services are not found in Facebook. Even though they have this feature called the catalog. You can actually put your catalog of your products on Facebook, but you don't want that. You don't want Facebook to know so much things. You want to take some control in your buyer's journey, in your buyer's journey. So therefore you need to have a website, right? So when you have an uh, ad, when you do an ad on social media, when they click, they should go to directly to one of your product pages, not your homepage, not even your category. So what that means, your ad must be very, very specific. It's not a generic ad that you put on a newspaper. One ad for everybody. Because today, digital marketing is about personalization. Right? Do you know that if you want to target one person in Facebook, you can do that? It's a combination of what I call custom audience and safe audience. Right? Say, for example, I, sir, I know your email. What's your email address? What's your email address? Okay, you don't have to tell me, right? All right, say, you know, what's your name? Huh? Gui, yeah? Gui, yeah? O O I. Uh, G O I. Gui, yeah? So his, Gmail, his account is gui at gmail.com. And he uses that, for example, to log into his Facebook. And what I can do is that I can get his email and put it into the custom audience targeting in Facebook, his email, right? And then tell Facebook, I just want to send my message only directly to him. And then my ad be so personalized that I can say, Hi, Gui. Hi, Gui. Hi, Gui. Right? It's not like, hello, dear all. You know, sometimes the emails that you receive, they don't even address your name, right? Right? You can personalize. How do I know? How can I target him? Right? So, face, uh, today's social media has that kind of capability. Whether it's Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram. Right? They have the kind of position that they can even target one individual. So, that boils down to this question, why should I target that one individual? Let's say Gui is a... He's the CEO of a multinational corporation company, right? right? He runs the whole Asia. And I, I run a training, uh, what do you call, training service. I'm a training service provider, right? I train people in digital marketing. So it's worthwhile for me to target Gui, Gui right? Because Gui has about like 15,000 staff in Asia. So I personalize the message to him while he's scrolling in his Facebook. Because I think Gui will be very, very super impressed, right? With me, right? How do you know? Wow, this ad talks to me, addressed to me, personalized. And that's the power of social media today, right? So you can reach millions of people or you can even reach one individual. Yeah, that's the power of social media today. Okay? So this is how I can target Gui, right? Because Facebook, for example, has this targeting called retargeting audience. So how do I get how do I get Gui's email? So let me just give you an example, right? So one day I'm talking about I write, I wrote an article in LinkedIn, well, which is basically um, 
10 reasons why your baby boomer employee employee should adopt to learn about digital tools that's my headline right baby boomers because we know baby boomers today those who are 65 and above uh, are called baby boomers right they have wealth of experience in the company right and wealth of network right so if you don't digitalize their knowledge and their network and if they leave or they die right all this will be taken away from the company right so i read an article about that and and August Gui runs a very successful multinational corporation, right? He'll be very concerned about his baby boomer employees. So then I said here, if you want to learn more about how five ways baby boomers, your baby boomers who are your employees can adopt digital tools, give me your email. So I write an article. That's how I get Gui's email address. You see what I mean? Because I'm giving him value, right? And I'm not even selling right now. I'm not even selling. I understand that he has this problem. And I'm giving him a solution. No more selling. And as a result of that, this is what I call branding. You become a, I become a thought leader, right? right? When, you, when, you, when you look at, read this article, right? Yeah? And, and then you have developed that trust and credibility because and, and, and the thing is that you time of what they call reciprocal because I give that content for you for free, you know. The well research content, you know, for free, you know. Right? So would you give me an email? You would. Because you have many, many emails. Right? But with that email, I'm able to target him again. That's what retargeting is all about. And in Facebook today, for those who have been using Facebook, uh, doing Facebook advertising, Website custom audiences is one of the most powerful remarketing tool that you should do. You should never, never, when you advertise, when you, when you, when you want to do a posting uh, on, on Facebook, you should never, never click on boost. You know the blue button? Boost. You should never do that. You are just making Facebook reach in it. Because that one is a blind targeting. You boost to everyone. Even though you can do some profiling, uh, some of my clients, uh, even to, from big companies, they tell me this, uh, David, when I do a Facebook ad, uh, how come uh, I get a lot of foreigners? One, uh? how, how many of you get foreigners here? Yeah. So th that's, that's because you don't do what you call your targeting right and use that feature. You should use your ad manager, Facebook ad manager and use safe audience um, and then uh, for example use custom audience and look alike audience i will share with you what is all these three things uh, right afterwards okay 20 more minutes is everybody okay so far okay yeah right so facebook look alike which is the second very powerful features is basically um taking in your current customers right your current customers and then what they do is that they will try to look kind of like a similar characteristic of your current customers in their database. That means what other people who can be your prospect customers. And that's very powerful, right? Because they are getting new customers for you. That's what look alike is all about, right? So look alike. So now with our mobile smartphones, the experience is everywhere. And, and we know today, customers is in charge of the buying process. So just because we have an ad, just because we have a website, that doesn't mean that our prospective customer or also the lead will what interact or come to our website, right? They will not. They're in charge, right? And it always stands what I call as quote unquote from Google, the micro moments. When you really need something, you will then check out your phone, right? And this is where um, you do everything with your phone. And that's where going back to intent marketing, right? Intention, right? So knowing for the fact that your customers are in charge, you are in charge, 
Turn your neighbor and say, you are in charge. Turn your neighbor, you are in charge. Right? Today, businesses no longer has their full control. Not like those Henry Ford days, right? Henry Ford, the creator of cars, automobile. Only one color, uh, black color only. Take it or leave it. Uh. Right? It's so like hotcakes. Today, you have a new, you have a product. Say, for example, you're selling handphones cases. Uh, handphone cases. Uh. And, and by the way, that's a very good business. Uh. Handphone cases. Uh. They sell a lot of handphone cases. Right? So the question is that, why should I buy from you? What's so special about your handphone cases? Right? You see what I mean? You, you, you get the other picture? Right? So as much as it's very easy to advertise in social media, it's very hard to stay uh, competitive. It's very hard. You need to stand up. So you really got to think of your business model first. What is the problem they're trying to solve? Before you, you, you jazz up your creative uh, visuals with nice, you know, you can hire designers and put nice pictures and all those things, but at the end of the day, customers will still evaluate, should I buy from you or not? Right? Should I proceed to pay at the cut or not? Because cut and abandonment, you know, cut and abandonment means that I place a lot of stuff from the, the, the online store, right? I, uh, I think I like this, uh, I put here one unit, I like that one, I put that one. Uh. No, after that, there's a listing of that. Then, they, they never proceed to the next page, which is the payment uh, particulars, right? And make payment, right? So about close to 60-80% of cases uh, falls under cut abandonment. And there are many, many reasons, right? Which I, will sh I hope to share afterwards. Okay, so some statistics for you, which is very important. Okay, just know from this chart, these are basically device used in Malaysia, in Malaysia. So, two things. Malaysians use a lot of handphones, right? So, the very obvious uh, statistics here. But what I want to highlight from you is that between smartphone and laptop, you see the number here? 88%, right? Only 41%. So, I'm not saying that you should only focus on smartphones when you do your marketing. Also focus in terms of your, 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 your laptop. Just make sure your website is mobile friendly. Right? So, when I say mobile friendly, it means that your, your, your website is able to resize according to the different type of screen format. Whether it's big or small portrait landscape. It's called mobile friendly. So when you engage a website developer, make sure you must ask them, is it mobile friendly or not? Or is it responsive design or not? Right? And the thing is that for e-commerce, right, there are many, many studies shown, right, which I won't give you the key highlights, is that many times for big ticket items, people will buy from where? From the desktop. With the exception of travel, uh, because I know a lot of you also buy airline tickets, uh, especially Air Asia from your mobile, right? Wow, you know, next two weeks, uh, Nuzo Kruan, holiday, or well, in between, you know, if I take one day leave, I get five days holiday. Uh, where to go? Uh, they call it impulse travel, right? Let's check out what? Our Air Asia app. And you can instantly book the app, right? You can book your tickets from there. So, but a, a general rule of thumb is that big ticket items, like furniture, uh, people normally will buy from the desktop. So, and when do people use desktop? When they are at home, long, or when they are in office during lunchtime. But when they are out and about, they will normally use their smartphones. So, smartphones are normally small items, like, you know, food coupon and things like that, right? And, and even things like accessories, like phone cases, uh, they, they use a lot in, through their smartphones. All right, so bear in mind. So when you do your communication, when you do your advertisement, be mindful, uh, because a lot of times, uh, we all very kiasu. Uh. You know what I mean by kiasu? In our advertisement, uh, we all put everything in there. Yeah? We all put everything, every single thing in there. So imagine in your smartphone, so small screen, even the biggest one is 6.2 inch. Lah. It's still small. Lah. 
right? And you wouldn't want to, 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 to put so many things in there that it's so hard to see. Especially for people like me, um, I know I'm 47, uh, so I need bifocal lens, right? So it's very hard for me to see uh, all the small, tiny font size, uh, right? So be mindful, right? So be mindful of that. So case in point here, smartphones and laptops, right? So big ticket items generally is through laptops, right? Small items that is not much of a risk to buy through their smartphones. So even in brick mortar today, people are holding their phones, scanning barcodes, right? So we know today QR code is super important today. So if you don't use QR code today, start thinking about using QR code because you can buy durants with QR code. In SS2, don't believe me. SS2 durant, right? You can buy, right? Using the QR code. Because today we have a lot of mobile wallets, right? Even Maybank is tied up, right? And have a mobile wallet with Samsung, right? So all you need to do. So we all know it's cheaper to buy, right? Sorry, cheaper to buy. Okay, the reason why we buy online, because consumers today are very smart, like yourself. We are all chasing for good deals, right? Yeah? yeah, so we go and buy, say something in a brick and mortar shop. What's the first thing we do? We pick up our, and we go to Lazada. Then we tell the, 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 the sales advisor, hey, Lazada, Lazada cheaper lah. So how? So you were seeing the, the salesman sweating, right? That's the power of consumers today, right? So we know that we are always looking for cheap deals. But in business, we can never, never continue to do our business by offering cheap price, right? Because there will become a point where the cost, your cost of selling is, is higher, right? Then lower than your cost of purchase of your goods. True or not? Right? So you can never, never compete just on price. Because you come one day, you can't no longer compete on price anymore. And this is where branding comes in. Right? Branding is very important. All right? So, in terms of e-commerce activity, you can see here that 88% of people actually search online, right, for products and service. Remember the word ROPO, research online, purchase online. Yeah? So, a majority of Malaysian, uh, this is uh, data on Malaysian, uh, very recent, January 2019. Right? So, and they have 88% will have visited a retail store on any devices. They have purchased product services online, 75%, and 44% would have bought through their desktops. Yeah? And they make on 58% are making purchase through mobile. So these are staggering numbers, right? Staggering numbers, uh, which will dictate our digital marketing strategy. Yeah? Hmm. A lot of things to do, huh? <laughs> so, always at this juncture, when I share this with my uh, big uh, corporation clients, right? They always have this question they ask me, especially to those from the marketing department. So the question is, should I do this in-house or should I outsource? So there are pros and cons, okay? So if you want to know what are the pros and cons, Later afterwards, after this session, I'll be having a small, teeny, weeny, small table there, right? I'll be seated there. Uh, you can ask, come and ask me, okay? Because I want to give you all free 15 minutes consultancy. All right, 15 minutes only, yeah? Because uh, there'll be other people waiting, hopefully, yeah? All right? So it'll be free, yeah? Well, as I said, free is a very powerful uh, word, okay? Free 15 minutes, one five minutes, and you can ask me, what is the pro or cons? Should I do this in-house or should I do this, should I outsource, right? And this is something that I hope I can help you with, right? So, this is a whole ecology, uh, ecology of, of, of uh, what you call digital marketing, right? Which you need to work on pay, own, and earn media, all right? So let's look at social media since the topic is social media today. 
All right. So if you look at this profile here, social media, basically, these are the what I call digital natives. All right. And these are the Gen Ys, and these are the Gen X, which is my generation, and these are the baby boomers. Okay. So as much as you can see that social media, right, is really working around the digital natives, right? We mustn't neglect the baby boomers too. And let me, let me tell you why. Because the millennials who are following this, they have no time, no money. The baby boomers, even though it's a small percentage, they got money and they got time. So take your pick, okay? So if you look at social media advertising audience in today, ad advertising audience that you can actually target on in Facebook is 24 million, 12 million for Instagram, 2.63 in, in, in uh, Twitter, 1.65 in Snapchat, right? Just know that all your kids uh, right now are not in Facebook anymore. They are in Snapchat, all right? Yeah, and LinkedIn. Right. So LinkedIn is very good for B2B marketing. So if your clients are corporations, big corporations, you use LinkedIn. But for today's uh, topic, I'm talking about Facebook. Okay? Yeah? So, so this, all these four companies, four, four platforms, they belong to one company. They belong to Mark Zuckerberg. Okay? So in, in, in digital, uh, when we do social media, uh, consumers, your consumers leave a lot of digital footprints, a lot of information, right? So, like for example, how much data does Facebook have on one user alone? Yeah, this much. So if you add all, all up, it's about more than 400,000 data points about one individual. There's tons of data on you, okay? So, and how does Facebook use this data? I will not uh, go in, uh, elaborate so much on this. You can download this in Slack shares, uh, and then you can find out the reason, right? But basically, it's the social plugin. You know, in some of the websites, do you see all these icons, these button shapes, right? So, Facebook get their data when you visit a website and have a social plugin button in there, okay? So, they use this. And uh, Facebook has a lot of analytics that they can even use the IP address yeah, to list the countries where they're from. So this is particularly important for those businesses who are doing export business. Yeah, export business. Right? Because the Malaysia economy is not so great. So we need to widen our market. Right? So we use our social media to do that. So cookies. And one of the things that, um, you know, a lot of times when you want to use a very powerful uh, feature of Facebook, for example, is what I call Facebook Pixel. How many of you have a Facebook Pixel on your website? Show of hands. Okay, only one, right? Yeah. Uh, so Facebook Pixels are uh, basically a, sh a short code, right? A program code that is installed in your website so that Facebook can know what are the activities that when people come to your website, which page they go into, and then can use this information to do retargeting. Retargeting, right? Okay. So, um, these are the average engagement, but just want to show you the numbers are actually very low. Why is it very low? So when you do a post on Facebook, that doesn't mean that people will see it, right? Yeah, it's very low because, you know, Facebook uh, users have a very different mindset when it comes to uh, what they call your Facebook. Okay, so um, now I'm going to really zip through, right, because uh, I think my time is up. Um, another maybe one minute. Can I have five minutes? Can I have five minutes? Yeah. All right, five minutes. I'm going to zip through this uh, and, 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 and I'm just going to show you the framework, right, very quickly. All right. So, let me go through this right now. Okay, so when we do a post, right, without a proper strategy, what happens is that it's like going for a kiss for the first five minutes in a day, right? You're hoping people to interact with you. 99% of the time, it doesn't end up well because you need to build relationship and it takes time, right? And trust needs to be earned. 
So the things that in Facebook audiences and consumer mindset are very different because people generally don't visit Facebook actively searching for product or services. Right? True? Okay? And in fact, it takes about six to nine times, right, before they actually buy your product. So you need to constantly reach them, but don't reach them to the point that you annoy them. Right? So you need to do frequency cap when you do your advertisement. All right? Yeah? So it is very important to look at micro conversion, which is basically moving your prospect through a marketing funnel. And this is what I'm going to show you by providing and increasing what I call shared value. A good value for you and also a good value to your customer. Okay? So social media has provided that. So let's now, in the next four minutes, I'm going to zip through this. Right, and if you have any questions about the marketing funnels, I'm free to see you and take that call. I mean, you know, and, and enlighten you. Okay? So this is the marketing touch points for the buying funnels. So for a shopper, a window shopper to become a, what they call a purchaser, right? Somebody who purchase from you, they go through many, many marketing touch points. Right? Um, they go through different, different medias and channels. Okay? So as a business, you need to stand out in this cluttered environment. Yeah, you need to stand out in this cluttered environment. So with so many user points, interaction points, it seems like, you know, you can sometimes feel overwhelmed. And that's where the, 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 the pro about outsourcing your, your social media marketing to somebody else who's an expert and let you focus on the business. That is the value of outsourcing, right? And in fact, nine out of 10 times, I will ask you to outsource. Right? Save, the, save time and, 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 and use the money for you to focus on your business strategy. Okay? So we want to boost conversion and retention. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the funnel, right? This is called the, the funnel. The funnel basically starts from awareness to interest right down to advocacy. Right? So it doesn't only really stop just in purchase because we want our customers to keep on buying for us. Right? And therefore, as a sign of what I call loyalty, and this is where we want our customers to rave about us. And in Facebook Advertising Funnel, there are many, many features that you can look at, which I talk about custom audiences, um, look-alike audiences, and even product page custom audiences, uh, add target to cart. All these are the features that will help your customers from being cold to become sizzling hot. Right? So this is a framework that you can use. So I cannot suggest that you download this. Right? You go download this and then study this and, and later on get my emails, my phone numbers and uh, you know, feel free to ask me about this process. Okay? So in the next two minutes, I'm going to just zip through this. I'm not going to say anything. To just give you a preview of what the marketing funnel is all about. Okay? So this is the marketing funnel. So at level one, we talk about awareness, right? It's about building trust. This is where branding is. So at this stage, it's a very cool audience. So you need to do what I call the bias persona. You need to understand what are their goals and what are their frustrations and what solutions are you trying to offer to them before you do any marketing, right? So in audience, uh, Facebook audience source, you can do look-alike audiences from based on your website visits, right? You can do videos, those people who have seen your videos in Facebook and obviously your customer uh, profile, right? Okay, so this is the pixel that I'm talking about. You can't do your pixels in ad manager. You only can do it on the business manager page. So, so you need to turn your Facebook page into a business page, right? then you only can activate this feature because your individual page only allows you to have only one pixel but in your business page you can do many many pages right so you need to do that right so um, and these are all connected to all the marketplace players these pixels um, and you can grow your audience or you can manually put it on your website okay so this is an example of how a pixel look like so in my website, I have three pixels. I have the Google Analytics pixels, I have the Facebook pixels, and the insights, uh, sorry, the LinkedIn uh, pixels too, 
right? So that I can manage and do measurements and do retargeting. Okay? So, um, standard events. So, then from here, you can do things like guides, tips, uh, downloadable PDF, short webinars, blog posts at the first level itself. Okay? Second level is basic interest. You want to basically move your audience from somebody who's aware to interest. And the things that you can do at this level as they are warm audiences is that you can do things like, for example, um, this part here, right? So ahead of Ramadan, we look at how the months long fast may affect your visit. No selling, right? Very top end articles, right? So these are the things that you can do. You can come up articles, then it leads into your website. Okay, uh, so example, Rigid Plus, um, if you look at this, page itself, they have a video, what exactly is the travel insurance, and um, this is where they land into uh, their category page, right, here. So, you can do things like, for example, uh, ad clicks, video views, page view content, so these are all the interactions with your posting and your website, so that you can have this information, you can retarget them, right, because they already know you. That's why it's called a warm audience, okay? So you can create instant audiences. Um, just let me just go through this part here. So you can create lead magnets, for example, right? So um, you can offer, you know, e, 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 uh, what they call vouchers, right? Promotions to attract them. So you can do a landing page. A landing page is basically a very specific page that you are offering to your uh, potential leads, yeah? And then the third part here is consideration, where you want to actually move the person who's interested in your product or service category to a more specific page, more specific uh, product offering. So the temperature is a bit cozy right now, and this is where, I want just to highlight, and before I end, right, for e-commerce companies, this is actually a gold mine. You need to use one feature in Facebook called the Dynamics Product Ads, right? Where they can actually mix and match your inventories of creative and your product listings, right? And serve that into one ad to the most appropriate audience, right? So it's very powerful. So it's done, done all automatically, but the setup is very, very laborious. And this is where you need the expert to do this for you. Because I, I can be sure if you do this by yourself, you will cry. You will wake you up at night, okay? Yeah? So, coming on to this level three, we then will move on to what I call purchase, glowing, and sizzling. All right? So, there are, there are more information about this, all these levels here, which you can look through. And uh, with that, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'd like to open up some time for Q&A. Yeah. I think, can we do the Q&A after? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, um, I'll pass the mic back to uh, Man. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, big round of applause to David. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, without further ado, let's invite the next one. Amiru, are you around? Okay. Okay, I'm gonna uh, two clicker, and then there's a mic. Oh, yeah. All right. Hello. Good afternoon. How's everyone? And uh, my name is Amiro. Everyone, say hi, Amiro. Hi. Ah. I think this is the first time I see it all the way to back. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Good. Okay. So uh, a lot of you are here until uh, they have to open up the door, which is a good thing. Which means that you guys are all aware of social media, social media marketing, digital marketing, right? So this is good. All right. So what I'm going to talk about today is I'm going to share with you guys my experience doing uh, social media as a marketer myself. So a little bit about me. Uh, my name, like I said, my name is Amiro. I'm currently the Chief Marketing Officer for Deliver. Any of you heard of Deliver before? 
Oh, so this is good. All right. So it's a good opportunity for me. <laughs> okay. So, uh, deliver. What what we do is we help small businesses, uh, like you guys. So, but we help in terms of the delivery process, the shipping part. So if you guys are selling uh, physical products, you need to ship out to your customers, and that's where we help you. So we are a system, a platform, that whereby uh, it's an all-in-one shipping platform. So you guys don't have to go to like post laju or any other post office to deliver your items. So you can do everything online. So that is deliver. Um, I've been doing marketing for about like seven years now since 2012. And so previously I also came from uh, Easy Store, which is an e-commerce website builder. And I've done a uh, few e-commerce businesses and I've helped uh, a lot of e-commerce businesses, uh, SMEs, through uh, freelancing. So I did, I did a little bit of uh, digital marketing as a freelancer as well. So now I handle the marketing for uh, this uh, small startup called Deliver. All right, so the first thing, um, don't do social media for the sake of social media. So I want you guys to remember this. Okay, you think, okay, social media, Social media is a great thing, uh, everybody's on social media, so I also want to do social media to reach out to all of these people so I can grow my business. Uh, that, I would say that, that that is the wrong mindset to have, and I've experienced this before. So I've worked with a lot of businesses whereby they say, okay, they ask me, uh, how do I do social media? Then my first question will be, why do you want to do social media in the first place? So that's where it all starts. So you guys want to start with your uh, mindset of doing social media. Why do you want to do social media? So I highly suggest you if the reason why is because it's a trend, uh, everybody's on social media, uh, rethink about it. So why do you want to do social media is you want to share who you are as a brand. You want to uh, create a community. community. You want to uh, do customer service. You want to help your customers, right? And people that are potentially your customers. So that is the mindset that you should have when going into social media in the first place. Social media is not, uh, I always say, that, like all of these social media, Facebook ads, all the, they are not like ma magic potion to help you grow your business. They are just channels to reach out to the customers. They are just tools. So how do you want to use these tools? That's, that's up to your business. So when we're talking about so the, the definition of social media, the, the fundamental of what is social media? So just look at ourselves. What do we use social media for? Do we use social media to buy products? I don't think uh, most of us, uh, we don't do that. Maybe 1%. We go on social media to look for things. But I can say that majority of people don't go on social media, don't go on Facebook, don't go on Instagram to buy things. Correct? Right. So, social media, it's social. It's where you socialize. People are good in their personal profile. I, I always see these. Uh, when I look at like the business owners, their customer profile, they're really good at sharing, creating network. But when it comes to their uh, business page, Buy now, 69 ringgit, last, uh, limited, stop, raya sale, ramadan sale. Where's the social? Okay. So, that's one tip, share who you are as a brand. So, social media now is different. It's not like it used to be, where you can just promote your products and then you will get some sales. But now it's different. People are, they, they see something that's very like, promotion, salesy, they just skip. Or maybe they hide, they just even block you, unfollow you, right? You guys, are, for those of you that have done social media, especially Facebook, it's really hard now. So what you want to do is, you use this channel, what do people like? People, people follow like these brands that uh, they can relate with, they can connect, these brands are really good, you know, like big, Big brands like McDonald's, they're really good. Uh, recently, their Ramadan uh, campaigns, you know, they don't, they're not selling their burgers, they're not selling their fries, they're selling their brand. 
So they want you to connect uh, with their brand. So that's what you want to do with social media. And also create a community. So uh, my experience as a small business, we don't have that big of a budget like McDonald's, Pepsi, KFC. And we don't have the time. We don't have 10 years to do brand awareness. We want, we want uh, business now. We want sales now. So what you can do is you can create a community. So what brand is, uh, for a small business, a brand is like people, people like you. They like you for some reason. That is your brand. It doesn't have to be, wow, you, you guys are really great at marketing. You don't have the budget for that. So you create this micro community where they like you. They like you enough that they're not going to competitors. So build a community with social media. Okay, now I'm just going through like tips. I'm not going through like flow or anything. These are just my experience as a marketer myself. And these are the things that uh, the strategy that we use in our management meetings. I keep saying this, I keep reminding them. This is what marketing is doing. How we want to use social media. This is what we want to use social media for. But because like, uh, so my experience as a marketer, like if I have a, a boss, uh, he will keep asking, so how much are we getting from this social media? It's, it's a tough question to ask, uh, to, to answer. So, but as a marketer, you really need to convince people. You really need to convince your boss. You really need to convince yourself that it's social media. It's not, it's not a, like a, a magic tool that gives you sales. It's social media. So you want to be social, you want to create community. It's not too late, right, to start. So those of you that haven't started yet or thinking about trying again or have started but didn't work out, it's still not too late. So I suggest just pick one platform, be really good at it. So let's say you want to go on Instagram. So just really focus on Instagram. Follow all of this uh, profile, look, Look how they create engagement. Then you try to copy them. Right? We call it tiru vasi. Right? So you can copy. It's okay to copy. You, I don't expect uh, everyone to like create something new. But it's even myself, I do a lot of copying other people. And then of course you have to relate it back to your business. So it's not too late. Don't think it's too late. Even though it's already 2019, it's okay. You can still start with zero. But if you're starting with zero, right, if you're starting from scratch, I suggest you don't create too many content because you don't have followers in the first place. If you don't have followers, uh, especially now with all the algorithm changes, algorithm updates, if you don't have followers or you have very few followers, don't be posting every single day. It's a waste of time. I know small businesses, you guys don't have time. So. Uh, you read all of these tips that says, oh, you, you need to be consistent. Yes, you need to be consistent, but you don't have to use like every single day to think of like what to post. It's really a waste of time. Trust me, I've, I've run uh, my own businesses and I also work with other businesses. You guys don't have time for that. To think of uh, uh, like what to post on a day-to-day -day basis and especially like me, I'm not a designer. You know, I, I, use all, I try to find all of these apps that can help me do design as fast as possible, but it still requires like, a, a big chunk of your time, right? So, I'm going to be straight with you guys. Don't waste your time posting too much, especially if you don't have uh, that many followers. So what you can do is, if you already have existing customer base, get them, use email, use phone numbers, get them to uh, follow you on social media. or you can use, like just now, uh, David mentioned about Facebook ads. You can do custom audiences, look like audiences. Pay a bit. I mean, it's not even much. You can even set like 100 ringgit per month to run ads and get that uh, focus on quality posts and uh, boost the posts to get people uh, seeing, the, to get the reach. Don't be uh, posting a lot. Focus on getting followers first. If you have a lot, like 10,000 and above, then you can start doing some content uh, and provide value to your audience. 
Okay, so create something of value that makes people want to follow you and engage with you. If you're pushing sales, there's not really a value, especially if they they haven't seen the the like the value of your product or your business yet. So you want to share like your what what value do you provide? So if you're selling like um, makeup or something like that. So if you're selling makeup, provide makeup tips. Uh, any kind of uh, tips that's related to your business, provide some education. So then they have a reason to follow you. Uh, look at yourself, how you guys use Facebook. Who do you follow and why? What kind of the uh, content that you like and you don't like? So it's usually like myself, I follow a lot of these people in the industry, in businesses, in marketing, because I really like what they share. I don't want to follow their business, I want to follow them. Because they are really genuine, they are authentic, and they share their experience. But like I said, when it, goes to, when it comes to like their business page, it's always, it's not related to like you as a human, you as a, as a, like as a person. Why does it always have to be like your, your business? It's totally different. It's social media, it should be the same. So, create value, uh, provide tips, uh, provide entertainment, people like entertainment, cat videos. I like to watch sports videos, so a lot of my uh, consumption on social media is watching all these sports videos. I really like sports videos. So even I'm a, market, I'm a digital marketer, I'm a CMO, how I use social media, I look at sports videos. So keep, keep that in mind. The people you are targeting, what do they like? Do they like tips? Do they like educational stuff? Do they like uh, just entertainment, all these like viral videos? So who are your target audience? And those are the value that you want to provide to them. Then only they will follow you. If not, they, they uh, have a lot of other people to follow. Sometimes, you know, your, your news feed doesn't even show every one of your friends, every page of your, uh, that you follow because of the algorithm, right? So you want to make sure that they keep coming back to you. And Facebook sees this, Instagram sees this, that, oh, this person is uh, really engaging with this business. So every time they go open up their news feed, they will see your business. But you have to give them a reason why to follow. Okay, one thing that I like to do as well, uh, this actually didn't start since like 2019, uh, this, this new year. So, me, myself as a marketer, I try to think of, uh, okay, what, what is the future like for businesses uh, in terms of marketing? Because what you are doing now will not work in a few months or next year. So what I have been doing, hasn't been working now. So I need to change my strategy. And uh, one of the things that changed is the social media. And uh, so for Deliver, we are a B2B, which means that we target businesses. So try to imagine being social media, doing social media, what to buy, like personal shopper, right? I, I also cannot bring this, I don't know, like how, how why is this happening in the first place? It's, and then when you think about it, well, they are people. They buy things at Jai Grocer. So what do they want? They want convenience. They probably don't want to go out to the traffic, uh, you know, go through traffic, just to go to Jai Grocer and then get some few items. So in that case, she's, she's an influencer herself. Even though she's a seller uh, doing business, she's an influencer. So I started like showing her face, all that before doing like perfume tips. And now I've been doing a lot more of uh, personal shopper, uh, makeup. We, we, we did like personal shopper for perfume, like some perfume you cannot get in bulk, like Chanel, you know, like those Louis Vuitton. So imagine that uh, we, we got an experience going to LV for the first time, but it's not ours. We, we take order for other people, and then we, we got that experience. So that is community commerce. You guys are influencers within your own group. Your customers are influencers within their own group. So that is 
this new way of uh, buying and selling, it's community commerce. So it revolves around social media. So what you can do with this is you can tap into these micro-influencers. You can give them like affiliate, you can give them promo codes, you can tap into this, uh, this uh, community commerce and then leverage. It doesn't have to be like celebrities as influencers. It can be just the school teachers. You know, school teachers, they have this WhatsApp group and school teachers are very, like, I don't know, everything, like if this uh, teacher goes to like Legoland or something like that, everybody wants to go to uh, Legoland. Teachers have that influence. So you tap, they don't, they're not celebrities, they don't have uh, 10,000 followers on Instagram, but they have really strong, they have 10 people in the, face, in the WhatsApp group that really listens to them. Right, so this is just to give you guys an idea of social media. This is social. Community commerce is social. It's not just social commerce. It's a community. Right? So, alright, so I'm, uh, just a little bit more. Um, okay, the most human company wins. Remember this. If you guys don't remember the other points, remember this. The most human company wins. Recently, Biz Race winner, PTT Outdoor, Season 2. Uh, so they, they won the whole thing uh, for, for Season 2. PTT Outdoor, they sell like hiking stuff, uh, backpacks. Okay, uh, this example of uh, the Facebook post saying kita menang, Amy nak bagi voucher. So they, they say uh, they, they cannot make it without all of the, uh, the customer support. Okay, I have screenshot some of the, I'm not sure if you guys at the back can see this, but I've screenshot like an example of uh, what they actually posted. So here's one, it's in, it's in Malay, uh, I'm just going to read it. So, Chamna hiking korang weekend ni, okay, chun, share la gambar sikit. So, they're asking them to, okay, how was your hiking trip this weekend? Their target customers are people that, uh, that hike. So they're asking this. You see uh, the engagement, 163 comments. Here's another one. Okay, Al-Kisah, semalam malam ada, ada customer WhatsApp admin tanya ada free gift tak? So admin nak reply, okay boleh, I add in one shot. Tapi sebab mengantuk punya pasal, admin reply typo, okay boleh, I add in one sh... Okay. This shows that, okay, they are vulnerable, they are human. Man. So they this they make this mistake and then they share it. They want their uh, audience to know that they are human beings just like them, and they can relate. So they really know their customers well. Okay, here's another one. Really, really funny. This one says, okay, korang jenis A ke B? A berak dalam hutan, B tahan sampai rumah baru lepas. So uh, for those of you that don't, don't understand it, so they're asking a question. Are you Type, uh, you the, the person type A or type B. A is uh, you, you 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 take a a, a poop in the in the in the jungle, or you wait until you get home. So this creates engagement, uh, and so they know they know their audience, and uh, okay. So the engagement there, 185 comments because people people are replying. They are A or B. Okay, so it creates that engagement. So you don't have to run ads, but of course you need followers in the first place, like I, I mentioned. All right. So again, the most human company wins in PTT's outdoor. So in that case, in their case, they're the most human company, and they win the race, the biz, the biz race, Mbak biz race. So they won because they are the most human company, and that's how they get their customers. Alright, so uh, that's all for me today. So I just want to remind you guys that, I mean, even if you, you're in a very boring industry like manufacturing, like all those, the, peop the, the people making the decision, they, they are humans, okay? Uh, and when I mean by hum uh, the most human company wins, doesn't mean that you have to be really casual. I don't mean casual. Human doesn't mean casual. Human means that genuine. You as a human, how you talk, would you say like all these like robot, like formal language on social media? 
How, how, do you talk like that? In reality? Do you talk like that with your friends? Do you talk like that with your uh, colleagues? Do you talk like that with your parents? Your kids? No. We use human uh, language, normal language. So that's how you should talk on social media. Alright, so that's all for me. Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, you guys can WhatsApp me. It's okay. So here's my number for those of you who cannot see it. 012-915-4521. Uh, so you can see at the back screen there. So if you have any questions about uh, digital marketing or social media, about what the presentation today, just give me a WhatsApp because uh, I think we don't have uh, time to answer questions today. Alright, so that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Amirul. I think for today, guys, you better WhatsApp him because I think he's thirsty to answer your question today. So better WhatsApp him. Okay, next, uh, last but not least, Jackson Go. So now it's um, 3.46, so we might finish about 4.15. Are we okay? Okay, so Jackson, where are you? Okay, it's your turn. My check, check. All right. Okay, seems that we have a uh, lot of people here. And I have two news for you. One good, one bad. Want to hear which one first? Bad news. All right, bad news is you still have me. You still have me have uh, 20 to 30 minutes, probably. You want to hear good news? Yes. Good news is I'm the last. <laughs> Alright, so after this session, you can go out and there's a lot of food there I've seen. Okay, so um, basically today quite challenge for me because I just have like limited time. Usually I spend like six hours to cover everything. So I'll try my best to give you uh, the meat. Alright, not, not the veggie but the meat. Alright, okay. So a little bit about me, um, Jackson. So basically, I do five years business in providing WhatsApp marketing services. So I have experience in WhatsApp marketing. And ever since that, this year, started in January, I started to do my WhatsApp marketing training. So these are some of my photos. And yeah, usually for my service part, I service uh, corporate clients. Right? I help them, um, sometimes I help them to blast messages in the bulk. And then I also help them to organize WhatsApp campaign. And then uh, one most profiling thing is where I help a company to collect 30,000 database in one month. Oh, in three months, sorry, three months. All right, so that's a little bit about me. All right, the rest of the time is for you, okay? So before I even start, uh, this is me, I did live as well, if you ever seen that, okay? So before I start um, my topic, I wanted to see this. Let's see if I can play, yeah. what happens here in case you didn't know this is the future of whatsapp that it will be happening and it's actually happening right now but just not in our country it's all in others airlines and big corporates like united states 
the WhatsApp actually replacing? What do you think is replacing? SMS? SMS? Agree? SMS? Everyone agree? No, I'm sorry, it's not. Emails. It's embracing the emails. All right. So in case you didn't know, these are the future. So why? This is why we need to use WhatsApp as kind of one of the tools. And furthermore, I don't want to cover this because I think Mr. David did shows you the statistic. So let's just skip this and we have more time. All right. We talk about opening rate. It's up to like 90% and above. All right. Then let's see in Malaysia. Uh, okay, it's fine. In Malaysia, this like newspaper, they do use WhatsApp as a medium to engage with the audiences. You send this to like Oriental Daily, they will every day broadcast you the top like five ten news. All right. Then you look at uh, this is the most recent one, a uh, Asia. If you bought to Asia flight. In fact, in a flight, you cannot use your phone, right? But here, they offered you to use like, uh, if you connect to the Wi-Fi, they name Rocky, then you can use your WhatsApp in the flight. But sadly, say it's just one MB. All right, just one MB. So if I want to catch out you, I just send you one image, bye-bye. No more. <laughs> right? then, then this one is a uh, mass airline, they're actually using it. Okay, so if like you're buying airlines, uh, they will as always ask you like, do you want to receive our future updates via WhatsApp? I think some of you might experience that, or maybe some of you experience uh, shopping in Lazada, uh, Zalora. Anyone shop in Zalora before? Or just one? Oh, so we have a lot more potential for e-commerce. Okay, so if you shop in Zalora, and usually they will give you a shipping code, but the shipping code, they will not email you. They will, they will have a company named Ninja Van. They will WhatsApp you. And surprise, you didn't save their number, but Ninja Van is there. Ah, so this is the future of the WhatsApp. All right, let's see. So a little bit uh, sharing of my personal experience. This is uh, things happening, yeah? Um, how I use WhatsApp for doing my own business and engage with my people. Um, I started this like uh, last month, so it was actually inspired by this guy, okay? Because I have so many friends in my contacts, like 3,000. How am I going to message them one by one? It's kind of impossible. So I figured out, I figured out a way that I think I need to send something for them every day. Okay, it's every day. Yeah? Except Saturday and Sunday, like, let me off for two days, okay? So just like Monday, Friday, okay? So I do something like this. You can see, right? I send them like, there's a topic, everyday learning. Like up to yesterday is 25, all right? Then my name, who am I? Then some of, uh, actually these things, right? Don't need to be panicking about it. It's not, it's not I go and shoot the video or I write the articles, it's not. I just figured out from every day, I, fit, I scroll over Facebook and there's so many of the information. I just share like one, two or one of them, which is I think more suitable. Then I send it to them. Then I say, I am Jackson Gao, your companion tool was success. Yeah. So it's kind of like, hey, you want to be successful, right? you want to have something, achievement, I'm your friend. Something like that. So surprisingly, there are a lot of people keep replying me. And a lot of friends that have been lost contact for like, I could say 10 years, they came back. And then we met and he understand what I'm doing and then business done. Yeah, that's happening also. And then surprisingly, people might not reply you as well. But if you don't keep doing, and that's just happened like two days back, one of my friends, after I sent 20 times, only he re she replied and asked, hey, what are you doing? What are you up to recently? You keep sending me all this every day. Then there's a chance of engagement, all right? And for me, it's just 25. Lah. For this guy who inspired me, is a CEO of a property develop, develop company. So you see, 1,214. So it's been years, he's been doing. So why not me? So I'm doing this. But of course, sometimes he, you cannot tahan. Lah. Sending all this, I cannot generate sales, right? We still want to send about our business, about products. Just do it lah. In one of uh, some time, like maybe you send five times, six times, you just send on your products, you send what you do lah. 
uh, macam you give them a, a fish bite then get them sign up or something but of course you bad mind they might just ask you a hey, get me out from your list so you just take them out from the list because there are some people ask me don't I will annoy them if I doing this every day yes you will maybe two out of ten then because of that you want to stop doing it I don't think so because I have eight people more to, to do all right so these are some uh, my personal experience that I can share. Um, all right, now this logo, uh, who don't know? Don't tell me you don't know lah. <laughs> you know right? Okay. This logo, who don't know? Ah, uh, who knows lah? Who knows? I see. One, two. Ah, so many don't know. Really ah? Uh? Anyone can tell me what is this uh? Yes, it's called WhatsApp for Business, officially launched by WhatsApp in uh, 2017. Not mistaken, 2017 September. It's already been launched and it's for business purpose. All right. And uh, anyone is using iPhone? iPhone users, please raise your hand up. Don't worry. I know using iPhone is very rich, but please raise your hand up. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> How many? Yeah? Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, this is a big business opportunity because iPhone cannot use this. Yeah. Ah, so you must buy Android phone, any phone seller. <laughs> you must buy Android phone to use this. But good news is, a uh, few weeks back, they said Apple Store does launch this thing, but still again, not in Malaysia. Is that in United States and Mexico, you can use it, but not in Malaysia. iPhone can actually use this, but in uh, other countries. Okay, so this is WhatsApp for business. So these are the differences. I won't cover everything today and I won't go deep into the details. I just want to show you. Uh, the big difference is we have business profile, something like Facebook page. Okay, for the WhatsApp for business. You can have your business hours, you can have what you're doing, description. You can have your uh, website. And then you can have your address, all those simple information. Then we have two of these, greeting message and away message. This is more powerful. It is auto reply. That means somebody sent you something, you don't need to type, you don't need to reply, it's automatically replied. You just need to set it. All right? Away message as well, because we know if somebody send you a message or, or you send somebody a message, how much time do you think you give them the reply until you get frustrated? 30 minutes. I think 30 minutes is too long. All right? Some more if 30 minutes still blue tick and nothing happened. Right. So users of uh, people who use WhatsApp, we call it instant messenger and we expect people reply to be fast. So these are very good. At least, uh, sorry, at least I put away message, it automatically reply them that, hey, I'm not around. So I will be replying you like when I'm with my phone. So it's very good thing. It's a very good thing where your client knows that you're busy. All right. Then uh, talk about labels. Label is where a lot of time we have so many conversations, we cannot do grouping. So label is good for you to group. This is my new customer. This is my old customer. And this is a customer that didn't pay me. Ah, can also. Okay? Then we have a quick replies, which is different. Quick replies just act as a shortcut where you have standard question. Standard question is what? What you do? Who are you? How much is your thing? And then uh, your package. So you can actually do a shortcut like, like it has a shortcut setting inside, won't elaborate more. Just like you can put slash something and the long answer will be already prescribed. So this is meant for that purpose, okay? It's okay if you don't understand what I'm saying about the quick replies. You can download and you'll know, okay? But one tip before you download and use it, if you were to use this current number, personal one, to switch into the WhatsApp for business, one thing you gotta remember, you must back up or else you'll cry. If you don't back up, you'll cry because you have only one chance to back up. You have one chance to just back up in the WhatsApp for business for your chart history. Okay? Or the other suggestion is, if you have uh, the idea of using a new number for business purposes, then I would suggest you not to transfer current number to that. Because it happens that if you transfer, 
One phone can only have one business account. Then you need to have two phone. So again, any phone seller. Right. So if you, you have two numbers, but one is an ordinary WhatsApp, one is a business account, it can happen in one phone, so it's easier. That's my suggestion. It's up on you. All right. Okay. So the next one, we talk about um, success formula of WhatsApp marketing. Right strategy, right content, and right target customers. And the key is, we need contacts in WhatsApp. How? Where to get contacts? What do you think? I know in your phone you have a lot of contacts, but what about the contacts beyond your phone? Now about this, right? actually there's uh, something very... It's true, eh? I don't think it's funny, it's true. Actually, this thing is true, but of course, it sounds funny. Internet world, there's so many things happening out of, it's already beyond our expectation. So there is groups of people in the internet that they have one thing they're very worried. They worry that nobody calls them. They worry that nobody texts them. All right? So what I did when I first doing my WhatsApp marketing service business, I go to this one. I go to iProperty website. Okay? Because I know my client is a property agent. Then I go there and they always like to expose their number, right? <laughs> I copy one by one. That time I copy one by one. I think I copied like 6,000. I use one week, I like copy 6,000 and I use another week to send them one by one about my services. That's how I got my first business. All right. Of course, there is other website, association website, like I, I did search for a tourist guide. There is, you don't go to those websites that require login. That could be like, not so ethical. This is better. That already exposed one, property guru. A lot more, la. actually a lot more. <laughs> Easy, right? Easy, right? These are the coolies that you can have in a website. Um, what else from here? Yeah, after this, what about if you don't have internet? Anyone don't have internet? Seriously, anyone don't have internet? All have, right? What about you really don't have internet? Still have way one. You don't tell me you don't have way. Come on, business card, come on. Everywhere is business card. You go out there, there's new business card you can take. X Magazine, now I think running now. Ads magazine is where last time if you have an office, there are people keep giving you the magazine ads in the office for free. Right? Usually the inside there is a enterprise, they are, tend to use that mobile phone number put there. They won't have an office number. So uh, last time also the same. I copy one by one by one. I message them again, then I got my business also. Okay? Then uh, newspaper. Very old school but very useful. Right? Okay, then let's talk about after I have a contact, what I need to do. I need to do to create content. So there are certain criteria that you need to know. Like what is the image size? All right. And then what is the first fine line, front liner? And what are the title and the topic that you want to send? This is very important. All right. I know we, we cannot tell we want to send our products, but that could be I think we shared the marketing funnel just now. How's the advertising works? It could, it could be not our first priority to do that, to send them our products, all those, all right? The first one liner, in case you don't know what it is, is, is uh, you see, uh, if you receive a WhatsApp message, whether your setting is pop up or you go inside your WhatsApp before you go into the conversation, that is always first front line, five line, right? Five words before you even open. So that is the key. If I see that five words, I think it's attractive enough, then I'll go in. Especially from people that I don't know. Okay? Then, also, WhatsApp campaign. We talk about, that, that one we talk about uh, how to get sales. We get the leads, we send, we get sales. Okay, what about we have our clients, but we want to collect data. Okay, we want to have them save their numbers to address book so that I can use broadcast messages to send them. Okay, to save my cost and my time. So these are some samples. Uh, it's happening, uh, it's happening in the market. Like uh, Nestle, Maggie Cup, they use this. 
you buy a Mac cup, you got a snap the picture, you send it to WhatsApp. That's it. You're, you're entitled to what? Grand prize, cash prize, some lucky draws, all right? Second, this one. Same, you need to buy eight ringgit and above. You send a receipt, send the this number, then you get to participate in the lucky draw, okay? And then, uh, these are my clients, okay? I did, uh, before the auto reply even exists, that time I did the auto reply system for them, for this client, okay? So that it can run 24 hours and seven days. So these are what they need. You send the formula, this code, uh, this Cocoa Pie, the answer, answer from this question, yes or no. Then contest code, your name, your IC. Send to this number. Then they got your number. Okay? Then when they got your number, it's like that. If your customer, this is the flow that you can refer. When your customer sees your WhatsApp number, they either add you or not. If they don't, bye bye. That's it. Engagement is disconnected. If they do, then they send in a message. Given that if they, if they add right, they didn't send a message, you don't know. So if they add and they send, then you could add them in your broadcast list. All right? For this part, right, don't confuse, it's actually the same. That means one broadcast list, you can have 256 contacts only. So if your broadcast list is already full, then create a new one. It's just as simple as that. After creating that, send them a broadcast message. Either you ask them to click the link, send them a chat message, or send anything like you want to send your products. It's okay. Okay? So, interesting. This is about WhatsApp. So it's about to end, but I want to end with uh, this video. Here's some ideas uh, from overseas that they're doing. There are thousands of ways to learn new recipes. Even so, one in three youngsters don't know how to cook. And this moment keeps happening a lot through all ages. Mostly because people have no idea what to do with the ingredients they find in their fridge. But if there's Hellman's, there is a way. Hellman's presents What's Cook, the first live recipe service using WhatsApp. Just send us your number in our website and our chefs get in touch with you. Through the biggest social network in Brazil, Hellman's connects people to real chefs who are prepared to teach how to cook using exactly what you have in your refrigerator. You just have to take a picture and instantly they come up with a delicious recipe with Hellman's and teach you how to do it step by step. Do you think it's hard? They send images. Still hard, they send videos. They even draw pictures. And hey, they also let you know when it's time to take the food out of the oven. What's Cook is an alternative recipe storytelling that keeps inspiring people with new ways to use Hellman's mayonnaise on their dishes. But in a one-to-one, -one, real life experience using WhatsApp. Even being launched only on Hellman's social networks, more than 8,000 people signed up for the service in less than two weeks. With less than $900 invested on media, What's Cook was globally shared. Oh, that means the less, the most easiest way for them. So is WhatsApp is easy for them, do WhatsApp, right? If it's email, it's easy for them, do the email. But I think WhatsApp is easier than email. So once they go on the landing page, you ask them for the WhatsApp number. Right, so your second metrics you need to measure is the how many WhatsApp number do you get? How many leads do you get from there? Right? So then the third one is that once you send them a WhatsApp, you want a respond, right? Either to download an e-voucher or to go to a card or to download your app, your mobile app, so that you can literally do e-commerce on your mobile phone. Right? So that's two parts of the conversion metrics there already. One is how many people download the voucher. Number two, or how many people download your mobile app. That's another measurement really. Right? So once they download the mobile app, obviously they have to register, right? Ah, so once, then we measure another, uh, what, call, what I call micro conversion metrics, which is basically people who have downloaded app, how many of them have registered? That's another metric you need to measure. Right? Because download app is not good enough, right? You need them to register, right? So they can use the full feature of the mobile apps itself. 
So then from the once they register, right, you want to know how much time they spend on the mobile apps. Which product, uh, what do you call, section do they go into, right? And so you want to measure that, right? So that you know what's the interest. So for example, if you analyze the data, the, the metrics that they've been like visiting your store, right? Either through mobile apps or desktop, because it's a one single login, right? Right? One single login. So then you can measure, uh, you know, what are the products that they are looking for? And what are the products that they end up putting in the cart? And what are the products that they put in the cart? But Abandon the car. So all these are the micro conversion metrics that you need to measure, and and using Facebook uh, Pixel for example, you can actually uh, have this feature in Facebook uh, where by custom audience targeting. When you have a Facebook Pixel, you can actually target people who abandon your car. There is a feature that says that people who have actually abandoned their car. Right. So um, this is how you keep on reaching them. So when, 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 once you start doing all this micro conversion tracking and measurements and taking action, right, uh, you'll find that your return investment uh, of advertising spend uh, becomes higher and higher. Okay? So I hope I answer you the question. I mean, just give you a very, uh, what you call a, a big uh, overall uh, explanation of this. But actually, there's a lot of steps in between that. Okay. okay? Is he answering it? Yeah, okay. So, last one. If not, I think... Anyone? Last one? Okay. Um, I'm happy to be back. Uh, as I said, I know my offer, 15 minutes free consultation is still open. Yeah, okay. Okay, I think we are um, at the end of our session. But before that, before we end... Okay, next week we have a class, BM class.